Hello, and welcome to Grizzly's how-to video for setting up a Grizzly planer. My name is Kent, and this is Sean, an engineer here at Grizzly. This video is part of a series of how-to videos that we are producing to help make it easier for our customers to upgrade and maintain their Grizzly equipment. Today, we're going to show you, step-by-step, -step, how to set up and maintain your Grizzly planer. The machine we'll be demonstrating with today is the model G0453, but these instructions apply to many other planers as well. We recommend that you watch this entire video and that you read your manual thoroughly before you begin this job. You can call our technical support at 570-546-9663 if you need further assistance. But most importantly, follow shop safety procedures and remember, these are the most important safety device there is. First, I'd like to say that planer knives are extremely sharp. Always wear heavy leather gloves when you handle them to reduce the risk of cutting injuries. Setting the height of the knives correctly is crucial in the proper operation of the planer, and it's very important in keeping the knives sharp. If one knife protrudes higher than the others, it will do the majority of the work, dull much faster, and produce poor quality cutting results. The knife gauge that is included with this planer is designed to set the knives 1 16th of an inch higher than the cutter head surface. In addition to the knife gauge, you will need a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench and 10 millimeter open end wrench for the G0453, or a 3 millimeter hex wrench and 12 millimeter open end wrench for the G0454 planer. First, disconnect the planer from the power source. Remove the dust hood and the top cover to expose the cutter head. Remove the belt cover and then rotate the cutter head pulley to give you good access to one of the knives. The G0453 cutter head knives are adjusted using a jack screw type arrangement. The G0454 is equipped with both jack screws and springs to adjust the knife height. Which one you use is your personal preference. However, you should remove the one that you're not going to use from the cutter head before proceeding. Loosen the gib bolts until the knife is completely loose. If you need to replace or sharpen the knife, remove it from the cutter head and then thoroughly clean out any debris from the slot before replacing the knife. Position the knife gauge over the knife so that the knife edge is directly under the center pad. To use the jack screws, insert the hex wrench through the access holes in the cutter head and turn to raise or lower the knife until it barely touches the center pad of the knife gauge with all legs of the gauge still firmly on the cutter head. Be sure to check both sides so that they are even. If you have a G0454 and want to use springs, simply push down on the knife gauge until all legs of the gauge are firmly on the cutter head and the knife just touches the center pad of the gauge. With the gauge still in place, slightly tighten the gib bolts, starting at the middle and working your way to the ends by alternating left and right. Remove the gauge, and then repeat this tightening sequence two more times until the gibs are fully tightened. You want to tighten the gib bolts gradually and evenly so that you don't distort the cutter head and throw it out of balance. When you're done tightening, repeat these steps for the remaining knives. Then reassemble the belt cover, the top cover, and the dust hood. The correct height of the bed rollers will vary depending on the type of material that you intend to plane. As a general rule, the bed roller height should be set within 2 and 20 thousandths of an inch above the table's surface. When planing rough stock, set the rollers high to keep the lumber from dragging along the bed. When planing milled lumber, set the rollers low to help minimize snipe. The tools needed are a 3 millimeter hex wrench, 14 millimeter open end wrench, a rotocator, or straight edge and feeler gauges. Use the rotocator to check the height of the rollers on both sides, front and back. If a rotocator is not available, a straight edge and feeler gauges can be used, but more care must be taken to achieve accurate results. Make sure that you're still disconnected from the power source. Next, lower the table all the way and give yourself room to work. If adjustment is needed, simply loosen the set screw Rotate the eccentric adjustment bolt to raise or lower the bed roller, then tighten the set screw. Be sure to check that both sides are set at the same height, as adjusting one can affect the height of the other.
It is essential that the feed rollers, chip breaker, and pressure bar be set at the correct distance below the cutter head to ensure that the workpiece moves through the planer evenly and at the correct distance from the cutter head knives. These procedures assume that the knives have already been set to the correct height. If this hasn't been done, you'll want to do that first. To ensure accurate results and make the adjustment process quicker and easier, we recommend using a rotator for these adjustments. If a rotator is not available, two identically sized blocks of wood and feeler gauges may be used instead. Make sure to disconnect your power. Lower the table about four inches below the head casting, then lock it in place, and remove the dust hood, belt cover, and top cover. Set the rotator directly under the center of the cutter head and then find the BDC, or bottom dead center, of any knife edge by slowly rocking the cutter head pulley back and forth, then setting the rotator dial to zero at the lowest knife point. Move the feed speed knob to the neutral position to allow the infeed roller to freely rotate. Keeping the rotator dial at zero, position it under the right hand side of the infeed roller and find the BDC of a serrated edge by rocking the infeed roller back and forth. It should be set at 40 thousandths of an inch below the knives. If it is not, then it will need to be adjusted. To adjust this, loosen the jam nut and use the set screw to adjust the height of the infeed roller bushing block until the rotator dial shows 40 thousandths of an inch. Repeat these steps on the left hand side of the infeed roller, then recheck both sides and make further adjustments until the infeed roller height is 40 thousandths of an inch from side to side, then retighten both jam nuts. Keeping the same zero reference from the knives, move the rotator and repeat this procedure for the outfeed roller, but set it to 20 thousandths of an inch below BDC of the knives. Next, set the chip breaker to 40 thousandths of an inch below BDC of the knives. On the G0454 only, adjust the pressure bar to 8 thousandths of an inch below BDC of the knives. When you're all finished, reinstall the belt cover, the top cover, and the dust hood. The infeed and outfeed rollers move the workpiece through the planer. There are springs that exert downward force on the rollers while still allowing them to raise for uneven workpiece surfaces. Proper tension is crucial to keep the workpiece moving through the planer. Smooth or milled lumber requires lighter spring tension. If you notice fine roller marks in the surface of the wood, then decrease the tension. Rough lumber requires more tension because of its irregular surfaces. If the wood stutters or stops feeding through the planer, then you may need to increase your tension. First, disconnect the planer from the power source. Then, to adjust the roller spring tension to the original factory settings, use a six millimeter hex wrench to adjust the tension caps so that they protrude 1 8 of an inch above the surface of the head casting. The chip deflector directs the chips into the dust hood and prevents them from falling onto the outfeed roller and being pressed into the workpiece. First, disconnect the planer from the power source, then remove the dust port, top cover, and belt cover. Use the cutter head pulley to rotate the cutter head until a knife reaches the closest distance to the chip deflector. Then measure the distance between the knife and the chip deflector. It should be about one quarter inch. If it is more or less than this, you will need to adjust it. To adjust, loosen the hex bolts that secure the chip deflector and adjust the gap to one quarter inch. Then retighten the hex bolts. Then reassemble the belt cover, the top cover, and the dust hood. The anti-kickback fingers are an important safety feature of your planer. Do not use the planer if the anti-kickback fingers are not operating properly. Failure to do so can result in serious personal injury. First, disconnect the planer from the power source. The fingers hang from a rod suspended across the head casting and in front of the infeed roller. They allow the workpiece to enter and move through the planer, but resist kickback by digging into the workpiece if it moves backwards. Check the anti-kickback fingers regularly to ensure that they swing freely and easily. If they do not, first clean them with wood resin solvent, then inspect them for damage. If any of the fingers are damaged, 
The whole kickback device must be replaced before using the machine. Do not apply oil or other lubricants to the anti-kickback fingers as this will attract dust and restrict the free movement of the fingers. During the first 16 hours of use, the V-belts will stretch and seat into the pulley grooves. They need to be retensioned after this period to avoid severely reducing their useful life. To adjust the belts, you will need a 4 mm hex wrench and a 19 mm open end wrench. First, disconnect the planer from the power source. Remove the front panel and then the V-belt cover from the left side of the machine to expose the belts. A collection of black belt dust at the bottom of the belt cover is normal during the life of the belts. If the V-belts are being replaced, raise the motor to release the belt tension. Then roll them off the pulleys and replace them as a matched set of three. Use the hex nuts to raise and lower the motor and apply tension to the belts. The V-belts are correctly tensioned when there is approximately three quarters of an inch deflection with moderate sideways finger pressure midway between the pulleys. Once the V-belts are correctly tensioned, make sure the hex nuts are tight, then replace the front panel and belt cover. The main bearings in your planer are a permanently sealed and lubricated type and do not require any type of maintenance. However, there are other components that do require periodic lubrication to ensure long life and trouble-free operations. And remember, always disconnect your planer from the power when doing maintenance. This includes lubrication. The in-feed and out-feed rollers rotate inside bushing blocks on the ends of the rollers and should be lubricated approximately every eight hours of use. Add two to three drops of SAE 30 weight oil to the center hole of the four feed roller tension adjustment bolts on top of the head casting. The table rides on the columns and is moved by the rotation of the lead screws inside the columns. Apply a thin coat of SAE 30 weight oil to the outside surface of the columns and brush on a light application of multi-purpose grease to the lead screw threads. Move the table up and down to distribute the lubricant. Remove any built up dust or debris. Remove the three cap screws that secure the worm gear housing. Then lift the housing and hand wheel assembly off of the machine. Clean away any debris from the housing and gears. Then brush on a moderate amount of multi-purpose grease to the gear teeth and reassemble. Remove the front and rear cabinet panels. The table lead screws are synchronized by the table height chain and sprockets located underneath the base of the planer. Use shop rags and mineral spirits to clean away debris and grime. Then brush on a light coat of multi-purpose grease to the chain and sprockets and reinstall the front and rear panels. The in-feed and out-feed rollers receive power from the cutter head through the drive chain system on the right side of the machine. Remove the table height hand wheel and the safety covers attached to the inside of the drive chain cover. Then remove the cover to access these parts. Use shop rags and mineral spirits to clean away any debris and grime. Then brush on a light coat of multi-purpose grease to the chain and sprockets and reassemble. The gearbox oil should be changed after the first 20 hours of operation and then annually thereafter. Although it is not necessary to remove the drive chain cover to access the fill and drain plugs, it is a good idea to do so because it makes it more convenient. First, disconnect the planer from the power source. Remove the fill plug, then remove the drain plug and drain the oil into a pan or small bucket. Be sure to have some extra shop towels to clean up any spills. Remove the old Teflon tape from both plugs and wrap them with new tape and then reinstall the drain plug. Refill the gearbox with 8090 weight gear oil until it just reaches the fill plug level. Then reinstall the fill plug and the chain cover. Now all that's left is to power your planer and to get to work on your next project. 
If we can be of assistance with any troubleshooting while setting up your Grizzly planer, feel free to contact our technical help desk at 570-546-9663 or by email at techsupport at grizzly.com. We hope that this how-to video has helped you to set up your planer and we look forward to serving you again soon.